It's my feel good breakfast show. <laughs> Call us on your cell phone. Culinary hotline bling. That, that can, can only mean, mean one thing. thing. Uh, zing, zing, zing. 0839133728. And give us a call. You know what time it is. It's the culinary hotline bling. Sing, sing, sing. Get in there. Well, Yanda Muli is our, is our a special guest today, so she just learned about the thing, thing, thing. How do you think yeah. she did that? She did pretty really well. Uh -huh. Yeah, look at that. I'm now for Twitter. I couldn't turn stockings <laughs> like that. <laughs> Firstly, we'd love to see you in stockings like that. That's going to be like a weird sight. Firstly, before we even start with the questions that we get from everyone mm -hmm. at home, are you much of a cook, Yanda? Look, I can't bake to save my life, Ooh. so I saw cake there, mm -hmm. but I can cook. And you, what, what's your favorite thing to cook? Um, I love chicken, creamy chicken with spinach. Sometimes I do it with the chicken, um, mixed vegetables, so it's a, my favorite dish. Oh, there we yeah. go. Hopefully we'll see some Sounds cooking. Sounds hearty. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll see some of that cooking on uh, Uyanda's show called Uyanda It's On. That's premiering tonight, 9 o'clock on SABC3. Let's get into the questions, shall we? Let's do it. Uh, Ilana Spanika says, um, can you freeze cheese, please? Wow. wow. Can please. you freeze cheese, please? Yeah. <laughs> wow. She's a poet. <laughs> and yes. she didn't even realize it. You definitely can freeze cheese, but um, I'd always freeze grated cheese as opposed to freeze a whole block. How come? What's the difference? Um, it's very, it's harder to, when it defrosts, it can sort of denature when it's in a whole block. Yes. And it's harder to work with. If you want to sort of re-grate it, it becomes a bit sort of finicky. So grate it, put it in a Ziploc bag, freeze it, and you're good to go. Just yeah. take it out the night before you want to use it. Stuff like Parmesan's quite good to, to freeze when okay. it's grated. Is, yeah, go ahead, yeah. please. The thing is about cheese, is it, it, it changes the molecule inside. So yes. it goes a bit crumbly and stuff. Yeah. So I use it normally for pizzas, you know, the mozzarella yeah. on pizzas. And, and, and when you melt it afterwards, I won't go, go and put it on a piece of bread. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you want to uh, cook it after you've, afterwards, you've taken yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, there are particular cheeses yes, that are so better to freeze than yeah. others. So, so harder, harder cheeses, cheeses. Yeah, harder cheeses. Okay. Like Parmesan, cheddar, pecorino, edam, pecorini, yeah, 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 like that, that type yeah. of cheese. But I think for the most part, rather buy your cheese, use it up, and then wait until the next time when you need exactly. a cheese to go and buy it. And if it otherwise. becomes a bit moldy, just cut the mold off anyway. It's so fine. That's what I've been saying. Exactly. I, I've had so many people, I think my grandmother was one of them as well, my yeah. late grandmother, who, when, when cheese was seemingly rotten on the outside yeah. and moldy, just cut off the edges exactly. and then just exactly. use the rest of it. I still do that. Yeah. Yes. And I'm obsessed with melted cheese. Sure. Oh, yes. Is that good? Is that even healthy? Yeah, bring it. It's delicious. It's awesome. I love it's better it. for you. Don't care about health when it comes to melted <laughs> yeah. cheese. Little, little crustini <laughs> there, yeah, sprinkle some exactly. cheese on top. There we go. We're done. Happy um, days. Aliyah Pile says, um, hey, guys. Hey, <laughs> How do you tell when biscuits are done baking? That is great stuff because you want your biscuit to have that kum -kum mm. consistency, right? That kum -kum. You want it to have that sort of soft crunchy. center and the crunchy outside. I think it differs from recipe to recipe. What type of, but normally biscuits takes about 15 minutes to bake, 12 to 15 minutes. So read your recipe carefully. Mm. And then it will tell you it needs to be set on the side or it needs to be, this one needs to be a little bit of a brown at the bottom or it needs to be a little bit more browner here than on the inside. Mm -hmm. So, and what I do, if it says bake between 12 and 50 minutes, at 12, I will take one out and I will quickly taste yeah, let it. Yeah, let it cool so and it sort of sets as yeah, well. and then you can just taste it. Yeah. And that's a very important part of the baking process, letting yeah, it cool letting so that you cool know whether it's done. And then when you get that, when it goes crumbly yeah. in the center, yeah, look and then that. you it's can like just... Crack. Oh, just... Mm, that's How's done. That? Chocolate chip That's cookies. Nice. Mm. I can't add any velu when it comes to baking because I can't bake to save my life, but I can eat there it. There you go. <laughs> That's Make it all that matters, actually. <laughs> Make it look good on camera. That's all that is. All that is. All right, listen, we're going to uh, come back again. Of course, that number 083-913-3728 remains open. You know what time it is. It's the culinary hotline. Bling, sing, sing, sing. 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 Welcome back to our studio kitchen. It's time for the culinary hotline. Bling, ting, oh. ting, ting. What did you just do, Neil? No idea. Please Mixing don't. it up, man. No, 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 don't. no, no, no. no, no. It's ting, ting, ting. Get it right. Get it right. Listen, our number 0839133728 is open. We do have a caller on the line. Uh, good morning. Morning, caller. How's it going? How's it going? Lekker, so. Lekker, gaat lekker, maar it's good for you to have a TV. Lekker, man. Good to have you. Thank you for your inschakeling. What's your question? Thank you. I had a pisang brood gebak, but my pisang brood comes as a normal brood, the clear. Yeah, yeah. How come? And I get on over the sky, and one comes to the sky, and the brood is donker. And you know, comes so luchtig and clear. I come gewone brood clear. Oh, wow. So, so he's making banana bread at home. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, and but the, the bread is now coming, the banana bread, instead of like, you know, having that dark color, mm -hmm. it's now coming out like loaf white, basically. Yeah. Like a, oh, wow. How, how yeah. come? I think it's, it's, it's number one, the bananas, how ripe it is. Because how ripe it is, how dark it is. And also the type of sugar that's used, but perhaps the dark yeah. brown sugar that's been the used. The maybe maybe using muscovado as opposed yeah. to a caster. Or just bake it for a little bit longer, or even just a little bit of egg wash on top will be fine as well. That egg wash on top? That'll give it a darker color if, if you're really struggling. Crank the oven up, a little bit of egg wash. Yeah, but I think oh. I think I think probably the, the bananas like that key yeah. ingredient they've got to be yeah. very very. Have you ever yeah. tried to make banana bread before? Sorry, I spoke about baking. Oh, baking <laughs> is not <laughs> your thing. Like, wait, why are we dragging you? Why, why, <laughs> <laughs> why are we fetching me? What, what, from behind? Why are you so scared of baking? No, not that I'm scared. I just enjoy cooking more. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, because my I come from a family of five kids, yeah. and my sisters would bake, so I never got that experience to, you know, bake for the family and learn, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also think baking is a science, and you look like a free person. You want to throw in just what you want. Yeah. You, don't to, you don't want to go, okay, chop, chop, <laughs> this, okay, yeah, yeah. You don't want to do, like, five yeah. cups, this, this. Uh, you want to experiment. <laughs> okay, more. well, let's get to the baking <laughs> stuff here. Um, Jacqueline Anastasia Chetty says, Whenever I bake a cake, it always becomes flat. Uh, the cake doesn't rise. What am I doing wrong? Hmm. Wow. Um, <laughs> Probably a lot, you know. Check your recipe first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the shadiest culinary hotline you've ever done. Then it means so you rise, your oven is not, maybe your oven's not preheated, it's always preheat your oven, so put it into a nice hot oven so you get that immediate sort of lift from the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure your flour is not out of date, make sure you're using enough. Make sure you're using enough baking powder, maybe you should be using self-raising flour as opposed to normal flour. Um, there's a whole bunch of things, but um, yeah, just can just I can I drop those. Zola Nene's most famous line? Do it. Don't over mix. There you go. That's over mix it. Yeah. One. Don't over mix is the other one. But I say go to your granny and get her recipe. Yeah. The no fail recipe. Yes. Don't try. A lot of internet recipes, and we love the internet, but some of them are not proven. So if you just take mm. a recipe out of the internet, yeah. you know, you never know if the, 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 the balance between the liquid and the baking agent and the flour is correct. So go to a site that's really, um, like Espresso site, that's really um, um, got proper recipes on it, and try those recipes yeah. as well. And Hana Oma Krayar recipe. Listen, that was the greatest mm. plug in the history of plugging ever yeah. expressoshow.com yeah. mm. that's where you find it <laughs> all right we're going to keep that line open one more time 0839133728 as we continue with the culinary hotline bling ching 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 it's my feel good breakfast show call us on your cell phone culinary hotline bling and that can only mean one thing it's time for the culinary hotline bling Ching, ching, ching! Give us a call on 0839133728. Neil Anthony, Anel Portrita, Uyan Dambuli in the kitchen taking your questions. Guys, did you know today is National Caramel Day? Oh, what? Really? I can't believe it. I don't know who declared it, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Anel. Rub it all over your body. <laughs> Rub it all over your body, yes. Um, how, how to make caramel? People don't really know how to make caramel. And why are people so scared of making caramel? Just hold on, I just want to show you something. This is how not to make yeah. caramel. Neil did this earlier. I did that earlier. Now not to make yeah. caramel. First, so Neil, Neil, Neil yeah. you can take it further. Yeah, so basically, you're, you know, people are scared of crystallizing the sugar. Yeah. Um, you've just got to keep your eye, keep your eye on it. Um, the people do believe that you need to put a little uh, sort of, you know, brush and then sort of, you know, brush the side of your pan so that you don't get the crystals. Yeah. Um, it works for some people. I tend to just sort of stir it up. I don't really get too fussed about it. I also, the thing is, I also tend to make caramel in larger batches. If you're making like two tablespoons of caramel, yeah, there's a lot, it's a lot more fragile. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. when you're making larger batches, it, it's a little bit easier. So that's people's main scare. And then, I mean, I suppose just dealing with hot sugar, I suppose it's also quite scary. People tend to, you know, you know, people tend to be scared of burning themselves and stuff yeah. like that. So, but don't be scared. Just, uh, just go for it. Get yourself like a sugar thermometer that can measure the temperature of your sugar, and, and yeah, just go for it. All right, listen, um, we're inviting your calls to ask anything you m may have regarding caramel. Right now, I think Renee is on the line. Good morning, Renee, all the way from Somerset West. Hey, Renee. Hello, Renee. Hi. Hi, what is your question this morning? Okay. In baking or in making biscuits, mm -hmm. if um, if I'm diabetic or borderline diabetic, can can I? What is the substitute uh, ratio of sugar to stevia? 
Okay, okay. How, let's let's apply our scientific minds now, guys. What did she ask? So, so she, she's borderline diabetic, and if you're using stevia instead of sugar, what is the ratio of substitution? I would, I would sort of um, go full stevia, take out all the sugar, but then you know start substituting things like um, sort of like pureed avocados and bananas and stuff like that. It tends to you know give your cake that moisture, a little bit more sweetness. And then, you know, it takes, takes away that fear of using too much stevia as well. Mm. I yeah. think as well, if you look at your stevia at the back of the packet, just also check, um, say, one teaspoon is worth two teaspoons of sugar and yeah. start with that ratio. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're so, going to have to play around and yeah, test around with that. But, but um, once again, there's lots of recipes for cookies on the internet, very reliable ones with yeah. stevia. So yes. I, I don't know exactly the amount, but please look at that as well. Yeah. Okay, so maybe yeah. even searching for that. I was yeah, about yeah. To say there's a yeah. lot of like with the people that do banting or low carb. There is there's recipe books and recipes for that type of stuff. I was thinking we should sprinkle that answer with a bit of, uh, when in doubt, please contact your physician first. Yeah. <laughs> Just so that we have all our bases covered. I hope that helps, Renee, but if you do actually find a recipe yeah. like that, that uh, I think is your favorite in terms of maybe a chocolate chip mm. recipe, but that only involves yeah. stevia, send it through to us. Yeah. Let's see if we can make it and see what we can yes, come up with, right? Yeah. yeah, maybe you must take some of these recipes for your show and then, you know. I don't yeah. follow rules. Your own Baking method. is about mm. following rules, so you stick with the whole plan. You must heat the pan for this amount of time. Oh, no, no, no. no. You don't do well with like following rules. Risk. What are you doing there, Neil? Uh, just making a mess. Making a mess. Okay, it's a, it's a mess involving caramel so as yeah, this well. Is caramel. I'm so, if you're looking to, looking to spin sugar, something like that's quite cool. The best uh, kitchen to spin sugar in is someone else's. <laughs> so, the first thing you do is you have your caramel, and it needs to be at a, at a sort of pouring consistency, stuff like this. And then just do it onto a piece of greaseproof paper or do it onto a. This guy doesn't follow anything. Are you on baking paper no, as well? Yeah, no, he doesn't. Like the, ba the baking paper. Oh, oh my paper. word. Okay. Funky with it. You what? carry on. Yeah. That's that's nice. What's happening there? Yeah. This is this is your sort of more your sort of like candy floss sort of style. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, I listen. Like how about we just remain fascinated by that? We're going to keep our lines open. Uh, one more segment of the culinary hotline bling. Ting ting ting. We'll be right back. Yes, I hot my hood and I hot our kitchen so much. Right now, time for the culinary hotline. Bling! Zing! 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 Give us a call. 0839133728. Today is National Caramel Day. Mm -hmm. If you know who declared it, let us know. <laughs> but it is. We're talking about the different kinds of caramel. If we get a close-up shot of these here, mm. there's a like a, a crumbly kind of nutty caramel. There's caramel a toffee. Bar, there's a soft caramel. So how would you make all of those different kinds of caramel? It all depends to what temperature. This is like to a temperature that Neil has got this, like yeah. a hardball stage. I think it's this hardball stage. Yeah, that's yeah. hardball. And you pour that on top here, and this. Oh, there's um, chocolate and nuts at the bottom. Very simple chocolates and nuts. And then you can put that... Oh, that's oh. going to also go on top of the cake. Can it stand? Oh, oh my oh. goodness. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that just that blew my mind. Beautiful. Did it? it, it absolutely, I, I thought it was going to break in half. Look at that. I mean, how do you even Best explain that to your it. friends? There you go. Yeah. You tell them you oh. saw it on Espresso. There you go. It's gorgeous, hey? Wow. And it's such a simple technique that yeah, yeah. me showed us. Okay. Can this you take is, a call quickly, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jill is on the line calling us from El Dorado Park. Good morning, Jill. Hey, Jill. Good morning, Cat Cat. I love you. Oh, I love you, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> what is your culinary conundrum? Cat, I usually bake fruit cake, but it always cracks. Why? Oh. So the fruit cake always cracks. No one likes a yeah. cracked fruit cake. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would leave it to cool down in your oven. That's the general sort of rule. If you take a cake out the oven and it sort of cools too fast, that's when it starts to crack. So oh. uh, just turn your oven off, leave it to cool in your oven, nice and naturally, nice and slowly, and you should avoid your your fruity crack. Another thing is perhaps the oven can be too hot um, um, okay. and there pr can perhaps be too much moisture in the cake as well. So yeah. once again, look at the recipe yeah. in cake down or here. And I guess it's yeah, about, I mean, depending on, on the outside temperature, I, I can only assume yeah. if you're baking in winter and you're taking it out of the oven, yeah, the outside gets co yeah, yeah. cools very rapidly, which results yeah. in that crack. Yeah. So let it rather go mm. very, very slowly. Or just the cover process. the crack with icing. There we yeah. go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, send out greetings to everyone there in Aldo's. Oof, where's yeah. Eldorado Park? Eldorado Park. And they love it because I sometimes put a uh, 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 brandy in. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Custard. In the cake or...? Uh... So how, wait, how, 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 much, how much brandy... How, how much brandy do you, brandy do you feed your cake? One bottle for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Just 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.